line with the Asian stock market rally after Fed Chairman Ben, ben Hanke refuted speculations that the Fed would start to pull back on its massive bond buying uh, program later this year. The NSE All Share Index today rose about half a percent, closing at 37,327 points. So is the news the catalyst for the Nigerian stock market in Q3? I'll now be speaking to Deji Ola Juntoye, an equity trader at Stambic IBC Stockbrokers, to give us her thoughts on this development. Thank you so much, Deji, for joining us. So, um, like I said in the intro there, I think there is a sense that we're going to see QE with us for, for a little bit, at least for a while. Not, I mean, the, the scenarios that many people have feared earlier is, seems very unlikely these days. So we should be seeing some more foreign investors coming into this market. Do you get that sense as well? Uh, yes, um, Wally, thank you for having me. We get that sense, I mean, especially because they've been in for um, for the past uh, week and a half. Although they've been out of the banking sector, they haven't been so much um, activities from them in the banking sector, but they've had better activities than we've been seeing even from the local buy side um, clients from our point of view. Um, I think that we all, even before the announcement on the tapering, on the speculation of the tapering, we had all agreed that the market was due for a correction um, because the, market, the prices were overvalued um, there was a point in time where um, it, it began to say too far away, it began to stray too far away from the fundamentals. So everyone knew that there was going to be a correction at some point. The, the announcement, however, was a catalyst, and I think we saw it um, come down re relatively well. So it brought also with it attractive valuation and attractive prices, attractive points of entry again for some of these stocks, especially in the banking and consumer names. And then we have seen investors try to come in again um, to try to take advantage of some of these prices. Right. So we're seeing international investors doing um, the breweries, for example, the consumer names, and coming in three crews today, um, like we saw in the banking sector. The, apart from the big cross in UBA that we saw today, I think that there were good activities from them relative to what we've seen in the past few weeks. It's, it's interesting how fixated the foreign investors are on those consumer names, because when you look at this market, a lot of people talking about the banking sector as where there is significant value, and I want to get your thoughts on whether you, you, you anticipate a flow into the banking sector going forward. Of course, we have the Q2 numbers coming up. Perhaps investors are waiting to see what those look like before they begin to move. But your thoughts on the potential for those flows to move into the banking space? Because a lot of people have been calling for that, that that is where the money should be going. Actually, that's what we're going to see, and it's not too far off. There are positive sentiments um, surrounding the earnings of the banks, um, and then I think that a lot of forecasts have been made um, on the earnings and the release of the results. We're going into the results season, and we'll be we will begin to see um, a close in the valuation gap that we saw because of the falling prices. So um, the banking sector is primed to receive most of those flows that will come back in, especially because investors are still very much interested in quality names. And if you're buying a Zenith Bank or GT Bank at this price, which is still trading at some kind of discount to most of the um, target prices that a lot of the research houses have, then you will see that you are coming in for a long time to have strong, solid earnings. And you can also try some of the tier two banks. You have the diamond banks of this world, um, who, who people are interested in some of the retail story that are coming in. So eventually you'll see most, in fact, most of more flows in the banking sector that we're seeing in the consumer names right, right now. Right. Of course, even in the banking sector, if you look at the valuations, of course, they, you mentioned the quality names and a lot of people going for that. Many people may even say some of those names are already stretched in terms of their valuations. So I want to talk a bit about the opportunities in the tier two name, in the tier two space. And you just mentioned Diamond Bank as being one. Um, your thoughts about the, the rally we could see in that space. And beyond even just the foreign investors, I'm looking at the local investors now looking to invest in quality names in the banking space. Do you think that we're going to see a major rally in the tier two? Banking space? Yes, I think so. They're also prime for investment. But the thing is, if you're going for the quality solid earnings, some of them, will, some of the international and local investors will look at the tier one names first. But then if you turn to the tier two names, which I think um, eventually will get much more, um, much more attention, even than some of the tier one names. If you look at the Diamond Bank and their retail expansion story, over the long term, if that happens, there might be a uh, we'll solid performances, solid boom, solid profit in that name. A Fidelity Bank, Sky Bank are also prime names that people are looking looking at. But the thing is, it might be a slow start there because of um, they need to be more convincing in their quality of them. People look at the Q1, Q3, and they, when the audited results come out, and people are more comfortable with last year and then this year, I think going forward, we'll, um, we'll begin to see the kind of investment that is really needed and that's the kind of attention that's needed that we'll, be, we'll begin to see in that sector. So only those who are, who are um, the more, um, the more, 
let me say hardline risk takers will be the ones that are going in now. The other ones might need some form of comfort before they can eventually put their money where their mouth is. Yes, thanks, Deji. If you come back to the, today's uh, performance, um, we saw really heavy trades in UBA, and I'm wondering what drove that because today we saw well over six billion naira traded on the market. So, can you just give us some insight into what may be attracting investors to UBA today? Um, from all the indications that we got, it might actually be um, indigenous in nature. Um, we tried to call one or two because you know you never know what's happening. It was a big cross of about 483 million. I think that some kind of announcement might come on the back of that. We haven't heard anything yet. We're trying to get callers, but it doesn't look it's more local than international. As we get more information on it, I think it's going to come out later. Okay, and let's move on to the cement space. Dangote Cement is one of the stock that I think everyone needs to have in their portfolio if you're investing in this market. And we've seen the price stabilize a little bit recently. Where do you see it headed from now? Um, it's still a favorite in that, um, in that sector for us. Um, I think that the, the margins are operation, the protein efficiency will still improve. The margins will still remain stable. And even if the prices drop, the volumes, the increased volumes will, will um, offset for some of the drop in prices. We're still well over 200 from some of the indications we are getting. It's still a name that people are interested in. I think that it stayed at 190 today. Um, there was still good support there at 190 levels. So over time, maybe when the next, over the next set of earnings come, out, we might even see more uh, more increase in prices for, the, for that particular name. Um, Wapco 2 is another name that, are, that is a favorite amongst international and local buy side. So I think between two of them, and Ashaka is lagging, so, but eventually, like the tier two bands, I think that it will catch up with some of them. Not as much as Dangode Cement and Wapco, but at least relatively better than it's doing now. All right. When you speak with the brokers and the other traders these days, how optimistic are they about this earnings season? I think it's going to be key. If we see some major surprises, we could see this market fall back. Are people optimistic that this time we're going to see perhaps more uh, positive surprises than negative? I, I sense more optimism for the banks than um, for the consumer bureaus. And the, bur the consumer names, we, we will see, we're probably expecting an increase in consumer spending, but still relatively weak compared to um, year on year. If we do quarter and quarter, a stronger one. But And then in, um, going into the year, uh, going to the holidays, might see a pickup in consumer spending a little bit, but we're not expecting something major. For the breweries, we still expect that that would underperform the market, and then eventually people will begin to see some kind of disparity in some of the consumer and where they are trading right now. Um, so I think it's um, more positive sentiment for the bank than we're seeing for the other, for the other, um, for the other sectors, apart from cement. So banking and cement, yes. The consumer name is relatively flat. Petroleum marketing, we expect a neutral point of view for their earnings. 